everyone, this is Gail at Lady Fingers Sewing in Ole, Pennsylvania. Today I'm going to share with you how to cut out block number 20 from our Made and Found Quilt Along. Uh, it's hard to believe we're in our 20th week already. The, the series, the Quilt Along, lasts 36 weeks, which means that the series, the Made and Found series, will end the end of October of 2024. All of these patterns, there's one released every Thursday. Um, it are available on the Lady Fingers website, ladyfingerssewing.com, as well as on our Lady Fingers AccuQuilt Go Club Facebook page and on the main Made and Found Facebook page as well. All of the blocks are patchwork. All of them finish at 9 inches. And what I'm doing every week is shooting a video to share with you how to cut out these blocks using the AccuQuilt cutting system. The pattern that you are give, given for free, and this whole program is free, um, is uh, the directions are given for rotary cutting. So since many of us like to use the AccuQuilt cutting system, I felt this was a good opportunity uh, for a learning experience for those of you who desire um, some more guidance on knowing what dies to use. So this is a nine inch finished block, all of them are. And if they are a four patch, which, which block number 20 is, then you would be using the nine inch cube to find the dies that you need for this block. So that's what we have here and I'll just get started in cutting. We have two sizes of triangles and then we have a square. So we need what, what, three dies to cut out this block. So let's get started with the background color, which is color number three, and, um, and then we'll progress from there. So I'm using the Dimples fabric line to, to do this series, just for demo purposes. And of course, all the dimples, all 100 colors, are available at ladyfingersewing.com. So let's see. First, we're gonna start with the smaller of the two squares, I believe, yeah. Oh no, we're going to start with the triangle. So we need, in the background color, we need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 of um, color number 3 in the half square triangle. And that die is die number 5 in the 9 inch cube. The die board has two triangles on it, so in order to cut the 10 triangles I need in the background color, I need five layers. So I've already pre-folded them. I fan folded them. You don't have to fan fold them, but I did because I had a little strip here that just barely fit. Uh, and I, I, since I have a selvage edge on my fabric, I automatically know that that's the lengthwise grain, which is the way you want to, uh, your fabric and your die to go through the machine. The lengthwise grain doesn't have any stretch. So when it enters the machine and gets pushed and squeezed into the rollers, it won't, it won't stretch out, kind of like, think of a, a rolling pin and a, a round ball of dough. When, the bar, when your rolling pin comes down, it kind of squishes everything from side to side. But if you notice with the rolling pin and the ball of dough, it doesn't stretch it lengthwise. It doesn't make it any bigger very much uh, on the length of the, of the uh, pin and the roller in the machine is much like that. It's much the same sort of exercise. If that helps you at all, I'm always trying to figure out good ways to help you understand the lengthwise grain, which is the stiff grain, and why it needs to go into the machine this way. So I have my five layers. I'm gonna put the mat on top. Another thing to remember is my mat, look at this mat, it's getting really worn out. You can start to see lots and lots of lines in it because I use it a lot for cutting. And it's still serviceable, it's still just fine. It's supposed to get this way. And the die, the die mats are the one thing that will wear out after a long period of time. But to make them last as long as possible, you don't, don't feel you have to always put your mat right on top of your die just like this. You can move it a little bit like this you can flip it over and get the most wear out of your mat as possible because if you keep hitting the same groove that you've created in the mat it's going to cause a problem and it'll be harder for you to cut out nice clean shapes so if you're having trouble cutting out nice clean shapes check that your die is clean but also check that your mat isn't too worn out so we're going to cut this this was five layers so that we get ten 
our triangles. Next thing to remember is to give your mat a little love that just rubs it and then slide the mat off of the die board. That way you don't have um, as much static to contend with. Okay, so I have all of my background triangles cut, the small ones, and then I also need one, two, three, four, five, six of color number one in the same shape. So I have this same die, and I have three layers because I need six, right? Did I count that right? Yes. Six of color number one. Now I'm using a purple dimple. And my lengthwise grain is here. So I'm going to turn my mat. And I'm double checking to make sure my fabric goes beyond the edges of the, of the, of the blades on the die. Put my mat on top and run it through the machine. As you can see, using AccuQuilt is very, very simple, easy, fun, fast. It, it hits all my buttons, and I hope it does yours as well. If you've been using it for a while, you, you know. Okay, slide that mat off, and there we go. Okay, so I had one little snipple there. That's okay. I try to clean up as I go as best I can. All right, so that's all the smaller triangles that we need. Now we're going to move on to the other background fabric cut that I need in color number three, which is our background color for this block, I need squares. And this is the smaller of the two square shapes that are in your, your nine inch cube. And this is shape number two. So there's one, uh, two and three quarter inch square on there. And that finishes at two and a quarter. So if you multiply, two and a quarter times four, you could get four of these across if you were doing a different block. That helps you realize what size shapes you need. Since we know this is a four patch, then we know each unit needs to finish at four and a half inches, right? Because four and a half and four and a half equals nine. So we know that this is a four and a half inch finished half square triangle. This is a two and a quarter inch finished half square triangle. This is a two and a quarter inch finished square. So that's how, that's the easy math to find out what shape you need. All right, so this, the smaller of the two squares is shape number two from the nine inch cube. And it's a two and three quarter inch cut. I need one, two, three, four. Wait, this is the square. One, two, three, four. I just need four of them. So I have four layers of my background color. And this is the straight of green. So that means it's going into the machine this way. It's a good idea to um, find a suitable sizing or starch to pre-treat your fabrics before you cut with AccuQuilt. If you can, actually I do that even if I'm, I have to rotary cut anything. That makes um, the fabric a little bit more like stiffer so it's easier to cut and there's less fray. It also pieces a lot more easily if you have a little uh, starch or, or sizing on your fabric. I tend to like best press. That's my favorite. I like the best press. What is it? The second best press. The one that's a little stiffer. Okay so we have all the squares. Nothing else is a square on this block. And then finally we have the two large triangles Okay, and this is a four and a half inch finished half square triangle, and it is shape number three from your nine inch cube. So we only need one layer of fabric because we only need two triangles. And again, this is my lengthwise grain. So I'm going to put the mat on, and then my, fat, my die will go in this way. So you can see there's very little waste if you're conservative with the way you place your fabric on your dies. Just make sure the fabric goes past the blade on the die board. It doesn't have to go real far past, but it does have to go beyond the, the blade this way <laughs> so that you don't have a smaller triangle than you intended. 
All right, so let's lay out our fabrics so that you can see there's two different units here. There's one that uses the large triangle and then the smaller triangles. And then the other unit is half square triangles and the two smaller squares. So we'll start with this quadrant, which is the larger triangle and the smaller triangles. All right, so that's our orange. And then we have, I used a dark purple for my number color number one on your diagram. And then we're simply going to line up our triangles this way. I do tend to lay out my blocks first. It just helps me from making mistakes. And there we go. So that's unit number one. So you're going to sew your half square triangle together to make that a square. Then you're going to sew this to this, this to this, and that will make one large triangle when those are all sewn together and it gets sewn to this triangle to create your unit. All right. Next we have the other unit. Okay, and that one is using the smaller half square triangles and then the two smaller squares right there. So we'll lay that out for you. So here we have that guy, and that one, and then half square triangle units in purple, which will go here, right, and here. This is a really fun block to make. Um, this is, um, I'm not sure the name of it. I tend not to memorize the names of blocks because depending on where you're from or where you live or how you grew up or who your grandma was, <laughs> these blocks tend to have different, different names. So I'm um, Pennsylvania Dutch through and through and my grandmother Memmi, who was the quilter who started me in all this, uh, had lots of very colorful names for things. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. So this block, this unit, is right here. And you can see there's half square triangle units and then two squares. So these two triangles get sewn together. These two triangles get sewn together. And now we have four squares. And we sew those to that and that to that. And that's it. And then you make two units like this, two units like I just showed you, and your block is done. So this was a nice fun block to do again I, I've said this last week but this this is directional so these are great fun to lay out wonderful scrap quilt uh, design wonderful for all kinds of projects um, and I hope you take advantage of the Maiden Found series because you're getting 36 patchwork blocks for free plus a number of bonus blocks uh, I believe enough at least six to get you to 42 blocks in case you want to make a rectangular quilt versus a square. So I hope you're enjoying this series. I hope that you have joined the Made and Found Facebook page where you'll get lots of feedback and information and um, camaraderie and lots and lots of pictures of everybody's blocks to look at, as well as the Lady Fingers AccuQuilt Go Club. We have a very active group who's posting lots of pictures and um, making new friends online, which is a lot of fun, all working on the same goal. So thank you for watching and, uh, oh, and YouTube. All of these videos live on the Lady Fingers Sewing YouTube channel. So be sure to subscribe there, like us, comment, and uh, show us your pictures too, okay? Thanks for watching. Have a great day.